Assalamualaikum and hi to Dr. Abdul Manaf and everyone. My name is Sharifah Shakira binti Sain Ahmad Fuad Al Junaid. My metric number is 261173. Today, my group which is group Data Minor would like to present about our research study topic named The Factors of Depression Among University Students Due to COVID-19. Here is our table of content. First, we will explain the introduction of our research study. Second, the literature review. Next, the methodology that we use the data analysis and findings. And lastly, the discussion, conclusion and recommendations. Depression, or known as a major depressive disorder, is a widespread and significant medical condition that has a severe impact on how you feel, think and behave. Depression produces unhappiness or a loss of interest in previously appreciated activities. On January 25, 2020, the first ever confirmed case of COVID-19 outbreak in Malaysia was identified as a result of the regular exponential rise in the number of COVID-19 infected cases. The Movement Control Order MCO declared by Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin is a face-by-face -face restricted movement order for Malaysia that took effect on March 18, 2020. During phase one of the MCO, all public and private institutions of higher learning were mandated, among other things, to postpone all classes and lectures for a two-week duration. For the first time, all students were required to learn by using online classes. By that, our research study will study on how resilience and COVID-19 epidemic rumination and also fatigue, which can lead to an increase in the in intensity of symptoms of depression. Assalamualaikum, my name is Nur Nadira Akmar binti Zainal Akmar. My metric number is 261089 and I will proceed with problem statement. Rumination obstructs adaptive problem solving and creates increasing pessimism resulting in prolonged depressive symptoms. Thus, uh, people may lose motivation to address the source of the problem. While ruminating increases the likelihood of depression, some people can cope with life obstacles. The ability to actively adapt and cope with the impact of stress or trauma to preserve uh, the face of adversity and to typically maintain or enhance positive mental health outcomes is referred to as resiliency. Assalamualaikum, my name is Melissa Natasha Binti Ghazali, metro number 261085 and I'll continue with the research question and research objective. So the first one is research questions. So research question is questions that a study or research project aims to answer. So these questions are often address an issue or a problem which through analysis and interpretations of data is answered at the end of the study or at the study conclusions. So for our study, this is the set of questions that were analysed and answered at the end of the study. So the first question is, what is the role of epidemic ruminations and resilience on the depressive symptoms? And the second question is, how for the immediate the aforementioned relations? And the third question is, where is the interactions of epidemic ruminations and resilience in their effect or effect on fatigue? Now we get into the second one, which is research objective. So research objective describe concisely what the research is trying to achieve. So they summarize the accomplishment uh, a researcher wish to achieve or try to accomplish throughout the project and provide the directions to the study. So our research objective is to first examine the role of epidemic ruminations and resilience on this depressive uh, symptom. So and the second one is to examine the mediating role of fatigue in the aforementioned relations. And lastly is to examine whether the epidemic ruminations and resilience interacted with one another in the effect on fatigue. Assalamualaikum, my name is Izato Akama Atira Binti Jami'an, metric number 261125. For the next part is our scope of study. This study is focusing on the consequences and factors of depression among university students during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Our research will be only focusing on the university students' depression issues that were related to the epidemic rumination, resilience, and fatigue. The study was conducted by referring to the current pandemic situation in Malaysia throughout 14 of March in 2021 until 30 of June in 2021. During conducting the study, the COVID-19 cases were increasing rapidly in this year. In the end of March 2021, Malaysia has recorded more than 300,000 of overall cases of COVID-19 positive patients since the pandemic, pandemic started in early 2020. In April 2021, the positive cases keep rising to more than 400,000 overall positive cases and it has rise to more than 575,000 overall COVID-19 cases in May 2021. The cases keep rising on May and slightly decreased during the lockdown in June 2021. The students from all countries have experienced the psychological pressure because of the pandemic. Therefore, the scope of this study will be focusing on the factors that are affecting students' mental health during the COVID-19 pandemic and will analyze the situation from the students of UUMCOB. The relevancy of this research will involve the UUM student will be discussed regarding the importance of this survey to the university itself. This survey is very significant to the university as it will help for the university itself to be aware of this pandemic and the steps should be taken by them as they one of the party who should responsible regarding this matter. Next is the University Health Center or known as PKU which is significant responsible at the most towards this issue regarding to health. Any students or staff need to be treated and any swab test to be done there too. That is why the research data will help a lot to the PKU to arrange this matter properly. Hence, it will help the staff to prepare well for the COVID-8 preparation and to handle the case efficiently. In other hand, it will help uh, the UM counsellor also in a way of the case which can help the student to overcome the depression during the online distance class or lockdown. And lastly, it will help to reduce the case of the mental health during the pandemic as well. Next is for the chapter 2, as we identified the investigative variables uh, there are epidemic rumination, resilience, and fatigue. I will discuss on the definition and concept of those investigated variables. Firstly, the epidemic rumination, which is defined as the incessant and passive mental consideration of unpleasant stimuli and events, which exacerbates pre existing depressed symptoms and impairs one's ability to solve problems constructively. Those who engage in more ruminating have been shown to have more severe negative effects, feelings, and a sense of despondency. Next is the resilience, which the ability to actively adapt and cope with the effects of stress or trauma. Accordingly, persons with higher levels of resilience are less likely to be depressed, while the fatigue is the extended duration and intensity of COVID-19. Many people may naturally feel tired whether physically or mentally. The definition of the depression symptom has been used as a starting point in analyzing the theoretical background and theoretical framework for this study. For our research, the dependent variable, which is depression, were related with the variable of epidemic rumination, resilience, and fatigue. The Center for Epidemiological Studies Depression Scale, CESD, that was originally introduced by Redloff Lenor Sawyer in 1977 has been used to assess the symptoms of depression. The CESD scale is to be used in investigation of the epidemiological of depression symptom. It is mainly used for diagnosing depression or assessing the severity of symptoms. Based on Redloff study of the CESD scale, there has been a slight, slight but persistent connection seen between the score and the observer judgment of the participant graphs of question, regardless of the participant's or the educational level. For the scale, a higher mean rating might indicate that a population is at danger and having risk of depression and also need a therapy. The goal of this uh, research was to look into the effects of epidemic rumination and resilience on depressive symptoms. 
Next, the current study look into the fatigue as a mediating role in the aforementioned relationships. Finally, we look into how epidemic rumination and resilience interacted with one another that impact on fatigue. We suggest a conceptual model as the figure. Okay, now we get into the development of research hypothesis. So our first hypothesis is epidemic rumination is positively related to fatigue and depressive symptoms. And our second hypothesis is resilience is negatively related to fatigue and depressive symptoms. Our third hypothesis is epidemic rumination and resilience are significantly interact such that a resilience buffers the effect of uh, rumination on fatigue. And our fourth hypothesis is fatigue is positively related to depressive symptoms and mediates the effect of epidemic ruminations and resilience on depressive symptoms. This research uses a descriptive research as a type of study that focuses on the describing the features of our population, which are students from the College of Business in University Uttara, Malaysia. 11,076 total of students. We use a survey research or a questionnaire that we utilize a survey is an exploration instrument that comprises of a progression of inquiries intended to gather information from respondents. The population, our target population, is the student from the College of Business in University of Uttar, Malaysia, 11,076 total of students. While the sample is we, while the sample is undergraduate student that involves 370 students from five schools, which are 80 students in Islamic Middle School, 100 students in Tunku in Tan Shafina's uh, School of Accountancy, 50 students in uh, School of Economics, Finance and Banking, while 40 students in School of Technology Management and Logistics, and 100 students in School of Business Management. While for the unit of analysis, the key parameter that we use in this research study is based on the individual as the unit of analysis, as depression is related to one's mental health, not as a group. For the sampling design, which is probability or non-probability sampling, in this research, we choose a probability sampling. The term of probability sampling refers to the fact that every member of the population has an equal chance of being chosen. Stratified sampling is the process of segmenting a population into subpopulations that may differ significantly. It allows us to draw more uh, exact calculation by ensuring that each subgroup in the sample is accurately represented. By that, we gave a ratio for each school as we choose uh, the certified sampling with a ratio 0 0.22 to 0 0.27 to 0.13 to 0 0.11 to 0 0.27. For the data sources, we have used both primary sources and secondary sources. Firstly, primary sources has been used to collect the relevant data and information. The main method used in conducting the research is distributing an online questionnaire survey that was developed on Google Form. We used the Google Form to develop and distribute the questionnaire due to the convenience for both respondents and researchers in managing the form. The questionnaire was distributed to our targeted population, which are the students of COB in UUM. Then, secondary sources has been used to obtain more information and relevance about the topic of this study. We collected the secondary sources from article journals and internet websites, such as website of Malaysian Ministry of Health, that were used to get valid information that were related with our study. Next, we will discuss on the operationalization and measurement of variables. In the scale of measurement of resilience questionnaire, it refers to one's ability to actively adapt and cope with the impact of stress or trauma. It measured by the 10 item corner Davidson resilience scale, which created by Catherine M. Corner and Jonathan Davidson. In this resilience questionnaire, it has score from 0 to 4, which the 0 value means never, 1 is rarely true, 2 means sometimes true, 3 is often true, and 4 means always. 
Next is the scale of measurement of epidemic ramifications question A. Eh? The term refers to remunerative tendencies specifically pertaining to the events surrounding COVID-19. A 10 item COVID-19 reduced version of the ramifications response scale was used to assess epidemic ramifications. Each item was scored from 1 to 5 which 1 means not at all, 2 is a little, 3 means rather, 4 means much and 5 means definitely true. While in the scale of measurement of resilience plus epidemic ramifications question A, it refers to one's ability to actively adapt and cope with the impact of stress or trauma and ramifications tendencies specifically pertaining to the events surrounding COVID-19. They also scored from 1 to 5. Uh, lastly is the scale of measurement of fatigue question A. It measures one's extent of mental and psychological tiredness and exhaustion. Uh, fatigue is scored from 1 to 5, and the higher the mean score, the more fatigued the person was. The value of 1 means never, 2 means sometimes, 3 means regularly, 4 means often, and 5 means always. Data collection method used in this research is by using online survey. A set of questionnaires have been distributed to the students of College of Business from University of Utara Malaysia. The surveys we do online are very cost and time saving because they can be sent to many students at one time. Therefore, we were able to reach the maximum amount that had been set in, le in less than a week. The performance of this survey is much broader than other data collection methods. Okay, now we get into the data analysis or type of analysis used. So in this study, correlation analysis and descriptive analysis are used for our data analysis. So our study used descriptive analysis to analyze the data from our questionnaire as surveys are frequently used to collect data and it will be analyzed using various types of descriptive and uh, statistics. So while correlation analysis is a statistical method for determining the strength of a relationship between two variables, so we use this analysis to see if there is any possible um, connection between variables. For gender, a total of 269 female students participated in this survey compared to 112 male students. Therefore, the mode of gender is female. The highest amount for age category is between 21 and 23 years old with a total number of 261 students. Mean for this category is 22.64 while median is 22.49. Next, the most most of the students that participated in this survey is Malay students with a number of 312 students. There are also one Eura Eurasian student, one Bugis student and one Indonesian that also participated in this survey. Four major religions were chosen by the students. The highest religion followed by UUM students is Islam, which in this study with the number of 316 compared to 388 students involved in this survey. For the category of current semester, 55% of the students come from 6 semester. There are also 3 students that come from more than 8 semester. The least current semester category is 1st semester where only 2 students from 1st semester participated. Furthermore, because most of the students who follow this study are from 6th semester, therefore, the mode of the level of study in this study is the 3rd year. Semester 6 is one of the semesters, semesters in the 3rd year of university students. There are 18 programs offered in the College of Business UUM. The mode for the program category is Bachelor of Islamic Finance and Banking where a total of 82 students from this program participated in this survey. This value carries, this value carries a percentage of 21.93%. For the next category is a school under the UUM College of Business. There are five schools, namely School of Business Management, Islamic Business School, Tunku Putri Imtashafira School of Accountancy, School of Economic Finance and Banking, and School of Technology Management and Logistics. Most of the students who participated in this study were students from the School 
of Technology Management and Logistics and Tunku Putri Intern Shopping School of Accountancy with the same value of 102 students. For living arrangements, a total of 292 students live with their parents. There are also 26 students living alone and 59 living with friends. Not to be up then for students who are married and live with their spouses, there are five students who are coming from this living arrangement. Further, from this study, we found that a total of 0.097% of the students were infected with COVID-19 epidemic. The percentage brings the number to 37 compared to 383, which is the total number of students. Finally, based on our question, has any of your family members or acquaintance tested positive for COVID? We found out that a total of 32 students who had a family members infected with the epidemic. 337 students were confident that none of their family members were infected with the epidemic while 14 of them were unsure. The question regarding prior mental health problems, we found out that 19 students admitted that they have issues with their mental problem. 253 students are very sure that they did not have any mental problem while 111 students are still not sure. Okay, now we get into the normality test. So a normality test is used to determine whether the sample data have been drawn from a normally distributed population. So test of normality is an important step for deciding the measure of central tendency and the statistical method for data analysis. So SPSS provide a normal QQ plot chart which provide a visual representation of the data distribution. So according to the chart, we can conclude that all of the data for resilient um, epidemic ruminations and fatigue appear to be normally distributed as it follows the diagonal line closely and does not appear to have a non-linear pattern. For the goodness of measure, this analysis has used the Cronbach's alpha method to measure the reliability to determine whether the skills in the questionnaire was reliable. The analysis was conducted on every section in the questionnaire which involved the section of resilience, epidemic rumination, and fatigue. The first result that we analyzed is the case processing summary. The table shows the result of our case processing summary from our Cronbach Alpha test. As shown in the table, the result for resilience, epidemic rumination, and fatigue shows the same result. There are a total of students that are targeted in this survey which are 375 of participants. The valid part in the table indicates participants in this survey, which are 375 of them. Hence, most of them have participated in this survey, which shows 100% in the valid part. The excluded part determines the missing value, and for our result of case processing summary, none of them were excluded. Next, the table of relevance is reliability statistics which shows the value of Cronbach's alpha and the number of items chosen for the scale. From the first table, it can be seen that the value of Cronbach's alpha is 0 0.915, which indicate an excellent level of internal consistency for our scale. For the epidemic rumination table, it can be seen that the value of Cronbach alpha is 0 0.817, which indicate an excellent level of internal consistency for our scale. For the last table, Result shows that the, the value of Cronbach alpha is 0 0.876, which also indicate an excellent level of internal consistency for our skill. So, it is easy to get a high alpha as the item is 10. From the result, the analysis conducted for all the variables indicates that the scale is constant and dependable or highly reliable. Next, we get the result of item statistic for resilient, epidemic rumination, and fatigue. The result for all figures shows the value that Cronbach's alpha would be if that particular item was deleted from the scale. The result shows the value of mean, standard deviation, and the sample size of the survey. Item statistic give item-wise mean and standard deviation values. 
In the feature of inter-item correlation matrix, it shows the correlation of every item with each other. The correlation will be always in positive. The larger the value or the closer to value 1, there is the stronger relationship between the responses. Furthermore, the three variables are showing the almost same values. In the figure of summary item statistic shows the mean inter-item correlation which indicates the mean for all items in the scales. There are the minimum and maximum value which their differences equal to the range as in the, in the resilience value is 0 0.699 for the maximum and 0 0.424 for the minimum value. While in the epidemic elimination section for the maximum value is 0 0.676 and 0 0.33 for the minimum value and in the fatigue section the maximum value is 0 0.736 while for the minimum value is 0 0.85. The overall feature of the item total statistics show the middle column of it which corrected item total correlation in this part which the items everything else combined. It might be confusing as for instance it can be the selected item will combine with other selected item. Any particular scale being removed will increase the value of Cronbach's alphas in the deleted column. The feature shows the scale statistic which indicates the value of mean, variance and standard deviation of the total items which is 10, uh, 27.26 for the mean value, 47.002 of the variance and 6.856 uh, in the standard deviation for the resilience section while in the epidemic elimination there are 10 of total items also. 36.07 mean and uh, 46.214 of variance and the standard division is 6.798. For the fatigue total items is 10, 33.26 for the mean, uh, 61.422 for the variance and 7.837 for the standard division. We propose the hypothesis as shown. Hypothesis 1, epidemic rumination is positively related to fatigue and depressive symptoms. Hypothesis 2, resilience is related to fatigue and depressive symptoms. This can be proven with the correlations epidemic rumination 1.0 while fatigue uh, 0.369, which shown there is positively related among each other. Next, the correlations resilience 1.0 while fatigue is negative 0.2. 1, 5, which shown there is negatively related among each others. Hypothesis 3 epidemic rumination and resilience significantly interact such that resilience buffers the effect of rumination on fatigue. Hypothesis 4 fatigue is positively related to depressive symptoms and mediates the effect of epidemic rumination and resilience on depressive symptoms. For the discussion, the current examination to agenda at the impacts of pandemic rumination and resilience on depressive symptoms in college under study in New Zealand Utara, Malaysia, just as the interchange among rumination and flexibility and the interceding effects of weariness. Epidemic rumination was demonstrated to be decidedly associated with depressive symptoms in this investigation which is predictable with different uh, examination that have discovered a connection between the two species. Also, resilience was contrarily connected with depressive symptoms per earlier examination. In any case, in analyzing the immediate impacts, fatigue was the most grounded indicator of depressive symptoms, obscuring the impact sizes of the two previously mentioned indicators talked about. A conceptual model, epidemic rumination and resilience on depress depression, was utilized to quantify uh, one's psychological and tiredness and exhaustion. For instance, the mental and psychological repercussion of delayed openness to COVID-19 data is generally alluded to as a coronavirus weaknesses. 
or conclusions, current research offers new insights to take a look at the function of epidemics, resilience, and tactic on depressive symptoms. It is vital to retain and to reveal the well-being of university college students as they attain vital milestones at some point of unsure social ecology. Although focusing intervention techniques on fatigue can yield the best on the spot benefits, interests need to additionally accept to lessen ruminative uh, disposition and growing endurance. This can be specifically vital given the latest locating that the simplest selling one element with, with inside the absence of some other element can bring about excavating fatigue for decided on individuals. As the research being done, it will give several implications and contributions towards several changes in certain things. For instance, it will contribute to implement a new policy to UUM due to the COVID-19 for the sake of their well-being in there. In addition, it also will help enhance the awareness among people in the campus to stay safe and take this pandemic seriously as there are still people who are not uh, facing and trust of this hot issue right now. Lastly, this research helped to the responsible party to ensure the lockdown uh, not affect to the student health and less risk as for example, like the student health center or the management themselves. We would like to recommend some solutions for the concerns and related problem for the sake of improvement and future research. Firstly, it is suggested that high education institution to make intervention in the student's condition, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. For this study, it is recommended that the authority of UUM can come up with a strategy to encourage students to participate in a large scale of survey to identify their current situation, the needs of social assistance, and the needs of mental health checkups. The purpose is to know the situation of the students either about the background, their current concern, or worries. The university can help the students who have been extremely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. For example, the institution can identify students who are concerned about their parents or family members that have been impacted by the COVID-19 condition, and then give them counseling to ensure and maintain their psychological state at that moment. Then. Institution may offer financial assistance for students who are severely impacted by the pandemic, particularly those who are learning virtually. This is uh, since the expense of paying the internet charges to join the daily online lesson has appeared to be putting a strain on students and their fam family finances. The student might feel less burdened and can help to reduce their concern about their financial if they receive some financial help. Next. Due to the potential of continuous mental suffering because of the COVID-19, UUM can also focus on assisting the students in maintaining a healthy mental instead of avoiding pressure. For example, university may give adaptation for projects and tests as well as increased possibilities for online social connection with their friends. There is three questions to be answered. First, what is the dependent variable in this study? Second, give one objective in this study. Third, what is the mediating role in this study? In preparation of our assignment or research study, we had to take the help and guidance for some respected person who deserve our deepest gratitude as the completion of this assignment or research study give us much pleasure. We would like to show our gratitude Professor Madia Dr. Abdul Manaf Ben Buhari, which is our lecturer, for giving us a good guideline for this assignment or research study throughout numerous uh, consultations. We would also like to expand our gratitude to all those who have directly and indirectly guided us in writing this assignment or research study. Thank you everyone.